Are you getting bad imaging with your sonar? Did you know there's only four key steps to getting great imaging? Today, we are gonna go over step one of how to get outstanding imaging with your sonar. Stay tuned. Welcome to Sonar Tech Skills. Join your host, Greg Lipinski, as he travels the world training police, fire, and military professionals in side scan sonar. With nearly two decades of experience in the location, documentation, and recovery of underwater criminal evidence, he is now sharing that knowledge with you. Learn right alongside first responders so you too can master the world of sonar. All right, so now we're going to talk about how to get any type of sonar to get good imaging. Sonar is sonar. It all works the same, right? It comes down to physics. And if we can control a few aspects of that sonar, we can get perfect imaging anytime from any sonar. Don't care who you bought it from. All right. Well, it all starts with a target. What is our target? Anybody? What's our target? A car. Anything else? Body. What else you been sent out for? Obstructions. Gun. Anything dispatch sends you to, right? It's what you're looking for. It can be anything, whether it is a body, a gun, a car, a semi-truck, an airplane. It can be any number of things. A target is your mission. That is what you are looking for, okay? You need information about that target. What do you need? Size, Size height, width, area. Why do we need that? Why do we need to know what how big, how tall the guy is, right? Why do we need that information? Why do we need to know what the guy is wearing? Why do we need to know that the current was moving at seven knots or the wind was moving at three knots in this direction? Why do we need to know all of that? You need to be able to place or try to figure out where, one, that body went down, and then two, is this or is that not the target that we are looking for once we found an anomaly? So we're searching and we find something and you're looking at it and you're like, okay, well, is this, is this the car I'm looking for? How do we know if that's the car we're looking for? Why do we care, right? Out here, you may only have one car on the whole beach. You go up to New York, there's a car every 10 feet right? Put a diver in the water. He needs to know, am I looking at that car or am I looking at that car? We're going to go over a case study here in a little bit of a 97 Ford Explorer that went off a bridge, okay? Went off the bridge. There it is. We scanned, found the car until you go about 10 feet and you find 16 cars and nine more bodies. Actual case, okay? One car, the suicidal subject we are looking for, right there, we think, until we move a little bit further, and now we're, we ended up with 17 cars and 10 bodies. So which one are we looking for? Which one am I going on? Well, you're going on the one, the one that you're looking for right now. The rest of them you can figure out later. But how do we figure out which one it is? you need to know the information about your target, okay? Send somebody to the bridge to talk to the witness, right? Because that witness, somebody called dispatch, right? Now you're gonna, now dispatch is calling you and sending you out, and hopefully you have a dispatch that actually asks some pertinent questions, okay? What, what kind of car was it? Was it a sedan? Was it a SUV? What color was it? Why does color matter? Color, different colors will show different densities on the sonar, believe it or not. So size, make, model. And then now we know it's a 97 Ford Explorer and it went off the bridge on an easterly direction. It's a seven knot current. The car hit the water. How is the car going to look in the water? Well, there's different ways that that car could end up on the seafloor. And so we'll get into that here in a little while too. But once it's there, we need to know how long it stayed on the surface before it went down. And if it stayed on the surface, what direction did it go? So you need to make sure that you have a source to gather wind, current, right? Things like that. 
So now that we have a guy that's jumping in, we'll forget the car for now. Now we got a guy, six foot tall, white male, wearing a wife beater and blue jeans. He decides he's going to kill himself, so he's going to jump off this bridge. Where is he going to be? Straight down. He's a lawn dart, right? 95% of bodies sink straight to the bottom. They sink at about one and a half feet per second. Okay, that's how a body moves through water, right? Divers know that the average body is what, 16 negative? 16 pounds negative? Between 14 and 16, depending on age and how fat you are, right? But either way, 16 pound negative is going to drop like a rock. One and a half to seven and a half feet per second is what the average body drops. And once it hits the ground, right? It's not going to move. It's not going to move. It takes a lot of current to push 16 pounds along the bottom. Okay. A lot of current over 22 knots of current, right? A ton of current to get just the slightest movement out of a 16 pound object on the seafloor. So like he was saying earlier, the body is going to be in a radius of the depth of the water you're in. So if you're in 30 feet of water, that body is going to be in a 30 foot radius of where it went in. That's where you need to focus the beginning of your search. Now, that's all well and good for a guy wearing a wife beater and blue jeans, but what if he's wearing a triple fat goose? Yes, I said triple fat goose. I'm from the 90s. You know, those big fat jackets look like life preservers, usually have like buffalo bills on them or something. So if he's got a, a triple fat goose jacket, where is he going to be? He's going to hit the water and probably bob to the surface for a second until all of that jacket fills with water and then he's going to go down. So you need to know what he's wearing. Sometimes you need to calculate what he ate last. That goes in the whole forensic side. I got a whole different course on that. Right? But you need to figure out every aspect of your target before you begin your search before you begin your search. Mainly size, shape, material. If you know size, shape, and material, you're, you're pretty good. And then you can figure out wind and current after that. Make sense? All right, so if we know what our target is, right? We said our target is what we're looking for. It's what dispatch called you and said, you need to go find this. So we know what our target is. What is an anomaly? Something you don't know what it is? Say yours again. Could be your target. Anybody else? Something that shouldn't be there. He's the closest. An anomaly is anything under the water that is not the sea floor. Okay? To include your target. Your target is an anomaly. Okay? So the target isn't your target until the target is on your boat. Why not? Because it could be anything. Quick story. I'll go off on a tangent. I do story time quite a bit. Here's my story, and then you'll probably laugh at the end. Um, so we get a call for a homicide, or a double homicide, where a guy took the gun and he drove across what's called Willoughby Spit Bridge back in, uh, it's a bridge uh, through Norfolk, Virginia. And so they throw this gun off the Willoughby Spit Bridge, um, hits the water, and I'm a young cop at this time. It's like 2002, 2003. We had just gotten our first digital uh, sonar, and I thought I was cocky hot shit, right? So a uh, homicide detective calls me. He's like, dude, can you find a gun? And I was like, absolutely, I can find a gun because I'm awesome, right? So I go, and I put the sonar down. I have it 900 kilohertz. I'm dragging the sonar across the floor, and I find like 120 objects that are about the size of a gun, eight inches to nine inches or so. Now, our police department didn't dive at the time. That's a whole different story. So we had to call our fire department to do our diving for us. And I called up the, the, the fire dive captain and I said, hey, I got 120 objects for you to dive on. When can you be here? What do you think he did? <laughs> laughed at me, right? Laughed at me. He said, if you can narrow it down to about eight, we'll come out. So I raised the frequency on the towfish, lowered it down, shortened my range, talk about all that later. And as I'm dragging it, I find the gun and it is perfect. It is the gun. I can see the barrel. I can see the trigger assembly. I can see the handle. I can see the freaking front sight post. What the gun? Take a picture of it with my cell phone on the screen. I email it to the, uh, or text it 
to the homicide detective. He opens it up and he's like, damn. So he hands it to the chief of police who's about to walk into a press conference. Next thing I know, Wavy TV 10's helicopter is above me with their seven mile zoom camera down on my deck. Diver comes up and puts the kickstand of a bicycle on the gunnel of the boat. And so I'm looking at him like, yeah. right? Because I said I had the gun. I said I had the gun. So I'm looking at it, and if you look at it, you have that long part that goes down to the ground. That's the barrel. The, the spring assembly was the trigger assembly. The part that mounts on the bike was the handle, and that little lip, that little lip on the bottom of the, of the kickstand, that was the front sight post. So that kickstand lived on a plaque in my office for the next 16 years. So, needless to say, needless to say, that the target is not your target until the target is on your boat. Until then, you have an anomaly that matches the parameters of your target. A lot easier to come back and say, well, chief, it looked like the gun, right? It matched the parameters. I measured it out, but it wasn't the gun. Now, if I tell the chief, I found the gun, he's wanting the gun, right? Turns out the gun wasn't thrown off the Willoughby Spit Bridge. It was found later on in a retention pond in Norfolk. 